I sold uh, my main business like 18 months ago. By the time I sold it, the majority of my crew was Amish. Really? Yeah. Amish? Yeah. How did you find these guys? Do they just, so I. Because the, they don't use electricity, right? So like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we could we can, like get we them can, online. Can, can you about, get them online? We, Do we they could, cheat? So yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> Dude, I I got some Amish buddies that I I love, man, and I don't. So I don't I don't want to like, uh, like Mark, if you're listening, man, and you, you probably shouldn't be listening because you're Amish, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no. So the answer to your question, man, is it just depends on you know what church they're from and the rules, you know, the rules that they have established, you know, and what they're doing. So if it's for business, a lot of them can use email. They can really? use really, yeah. Oh, what a hack. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's ridiculous. Then you're not yeah, yeah. Amish. This well, is, it, that's yeah. the whole thing. You yeah. can't use fucking email. Well, here's the deal. So, yeah, so they, <laughs> I, you know, I, I'm not an expert at them, but I became very good friends with, with some of them. You know, because, I mean, I had some of them work for me for four or five years. And, man, there's some things about them that are absolutely amazing. You know what I mean? Like Hardworking people. Hardworking is an understatement, man. And the other thing that's wild about him is I had a lot of very young Amish guys come work for me. And, and, and we could get into the details of that. Technically, they hadn't, like, committed to the Amish church, so they weren't technically Amish yet. Oh, was, was it the Rumpspringer thing? Yeah, they would be yeah. kind of in that, in that process. For people who don't know, they have, like, a, a time period of an indefinite time period where they're allowed to just right. run around and party and do drugs and, and, yeah. and sleep around. And then they have to come back to the church if they want to. Right. And when they came out to my place, they didn't do any of that stuff other than work, <laughs> you know. But Wink. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, they they uh, they would come out, and um, what I noticed, man, is if you take an eighteen year old Amish guy, and you're just doing stuff around like ranch, because we you know we were outfitting and guiding a lot of time, but we also had to manage the livestock, and we had kind of a ranch that we had to take care of. Those guys at eighteen, they know a ton because they already been they've already been working for seven years you know what i mean they know how to frame a door you know they you know they, they they could show up to my place joe and like they're they'll they're wearing sandals and shorts and you're thinking like this guy's never been around livestock and you be like, hey man go grab that mule and saddle it every single one of them knew how to do it because they grow up they grow up catching horses and you know putting them on a buggy every day you know, mm. so it's pretty. It's just, it's just wild that they learn all these skill sets that you know really early on. Mm. So in some ways, like I don't, you know, from an education standpoint, none of them had a hard time communicating with me, or you know, we always could get through all that. You know, did they, they, maybe they didn't have as good as spelling, or they didn't have as good as like algebra skills or something because they missed out on some of that education, maybe. But I can tell you from a work ethic and like a like a hands on skill set. They're amazing, man. Yeah, like, that's an education too. It's a, it's interesting yeah. because we only want to think about education in terms of like things you can use in the corporate world or right. that you can use in the business world. But the reality of education is you're learning things, and they learn so many things. I'm sure that the average person who works in an office is never going to understand. Right. Take an average guy who works over at Google. And say, hey man, go go put a saddle on that mule. Yeah, and they're like, what the fuck are you talking about, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's a learned skill, and yeah. it's a learned skill that has a diminished value right. in our world. But in your world, in the world of outfitters, it's a very high value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, and the thing about their education too, it's like the homeschooling. I'm sure it varies wildly. Yeah, yeah, and that's why I don't mean to make a judgment yeah. on them. I, don't, you know, I don't. I'm sure, some of them are like really yeah, good at yeah. homeschooling their kids, and some yeah. of them. It's just like regular homeschooling, you know. I've right. met I've met some homeschooled kids that are phenomenal. They're like really interesting kids, and in but the parents did a great job of giving them a very nuanced education, and then sure. also committing them to activities so they interacted with a lot of kids on a regular basis. They just didn't go to school during the day with kids, and it's right. like if you have that kind of time and that kind of commitment, and you, you know, maybe you're just not very happy with a regular school system. It's right. not. It's, People used to think that it was a bad idea to homeschool your kids, but during COVID, I think a lot of people kind of opened their eyes. First of all, A, how difficult it is, but also that there's a value to being there while your children's or, children are learning things. So you can kind sure. of communicate with them and go through, especially if you have an expertise in something. Right. Like if 
like I used to uh, my my youngest daughters used to do uh, martial arts, and it was kind of like a mixed martial arts class. And uh, I would go with them to mixed martial arts class and uh, sit on the sideline. And then a couple of times some stuff came up. And I said to the instructor, I said, actually, you shouldn't really do it that way. Yeah. Because, like, they weren't, you know, as a black belt in jiu-jitsu, I'm like, yeah, what, you're, sure. you're actually exposed. You're going to get your back taken. If you teach people this path, right. like, this is a very vulnerable path. Like, let me show you the difference. And so I'd go on the mat with them and show them the difference. The next thing I know, I'm doing it with my daughter, and I'm having her do it, yeah. and I'm working with little kids. It's really exciting. It's fun yeah. to be able to teach your kids something. And they, they love that you know something that they can learn, and oh, it's yeah. like it gives them pride. So, like, these people that are learning from their families and from their community, it's a completely different way of life, but it's probably a more healthy way of life than yeah. the average person experiences just going to a regular mundane sort of, you know, very regimented traditional school system. Yeah. No, I th I think I think that's for sure the case. I but mean, the electricity thing is yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, you know, it's it's funny. I'll 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 tell you about a conversation I had I had with one guy that I consider a pretty good friend. And 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 I'll be honest with you, the Amish, from what my observations, they don't make a a real strong effort to have like close relationships with people outside of the community at least i i always felt that way but one one individual i would say is a very good friend of mine and i asked him like well dude like what it seems like so it's, it seems like like where do you where do you stop the technology where do you start and he actually had a rational rational explanation he said look man like we make these judgments and i think a big part of it is we're just trying to judge like we we know the value of having a certain pace of life and these technology judgments are based on that we want to be able to still you know succeed feed our families cuz they still got to deal with like the realities of you know they got to buy land to have their farms all that stuff but he's like look it's all about pace of life for us so if we look at a technology and it's going to change that dynamic then you know certain churches may choose not to do that so I'm with you, man. Like, there's there's odd things that they do, but I kind of get that explanation too. I kind of get it, but it's just weird that they have that electric like electricity loophole. Yeah, the yeah, email yeah. loophole. What does it say? The word processor. A new word processor with more memory and more speed may specifically f for the plain people by the plain people. Is that what they used to call themselves? I don't know. This is what, it comes up in a few advertisements for this. It's called the Classic Seal Series. And, but is it is the advertising is for Amish? Because it's yeah. calling the plain people. Yeah, it's